like TSA. This is a PSA. Sports in my blood like DNA. We grind for the chip like Frito Lay. And I'm gon' let you know if he don't play. I promise this show will never be a boy. Checking out talent from CK to North Shore. North Shore. It'll never be a gimmick. Woods at all day, now I'm at Nimitz. Kings in the city, we gon' need to wear a crown. You can bet us now, we the live in A-Town. So why you tipping in your lab or your Chevy or you chillin' in your house? Hey, how's it going? Happy Monday to everyone, and we're live here at 7 o'clock in Houston, y'all, and it's time to vent. I'm your host, Gentry Williams. Join next to me, good my good friend, Darian Valson. How was your weekend, man? Oh, good, man. Got plenty of rest. Uh, right. You know, just ready to get into it. Yes, sir. Ready to get into it as well. And if you guys were paying attention over the weekend, the Bucks fell behind 16 points early in Game 5, but rallied back to take a 14-point lead of their own and eventually held out the Phoenix Suns for a 123-19 win and lead the series 3-2 of the 2021 NBA Finals. Now, Darian, what's some of your recaps from that Game 5? Uh, well, basically, man, all credit goes to Milwaukee. You know? Right. They... They knew going into this series they were going to have to take one in Phoenix. Yes. And uh, they got that taken care of. Like you said, uh, Phoenix jumped on them early. It was that, it was, got up to 16 points. Yeah, 16 points. 16 points. And then after that first quarter, I don't know where that barrage came from with Milwaukee with the shooting, but they stayed hot and pretty much it continued all the way through the fourth, man. And uh, this has been an amazing, amazing right. NBA Finals, man. I don't think we – Looking back on it in retrospect, this this is going to be one of the most entertaining, competitive NBA Finals we've seen. So uh, I know a lot of people are looking at Milwaukee closing it out on Tuesday night. Yes, I wouldn't quite count out Phoenix yet. You can't count out. You can't Super count League. them out yet, man. You just you just can't because, like I said, the last two minutes in pretty much every game have been incredibly competitive. Right. So you know you never know what you're going to get. We yeah, you never know. you never know what you're gonna get, but this is uh, it's been a historic performance for the Bucks' big three: Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, and Giannis. They all combined for 88 points in Game Five. They become the fifth trio in NBA history to each have over 25 points and shoot over 50 percent from the field. So as these guys get better, is when when the Bucks are on top of their game. In my opinion, they're just better than Phoenix from what I'm seeing. Well, going in, I mean, Milwaukee had the overwhelming size advantage. Right, right. That, that was from the start, and I think we touched on it last week, you know, their amazing defensive identity yes. that's really helped them. But the story, man, has just been their amazing shooting. Right. I mean, Chris Middleton is, is – I want to – I want to <laughs> get to a, a, a tweet because once again on Twitter again. Yes, yes, Twitter. Uh, somebody posted a meme about Chris Middleton, and it said, Chris Middleton only has two moves, and one was a picture of Michael Jordan <laughs> – <laughs> and the other was a picture of Kyle Kuzma. <laughs> so it's, it's like, you know, he is night and day. But right, man, right. he's turning at Michael Jordan's side, and he's really helping yes. Giannis with that support, man. It's, it's, it's been an amazing series by him. It's and Drew Holiday. And Drew, Drew Holiday, him taking a defense assignment, even from the beginning of the Bucks series, guarding every opposing mm -hmm. team's best player. Right. And for him to, you know, be in the finals, be switching off between Devin Booker and Chris Paul, right. he's showing why he's he, he has that first team all NBA next to his name. And that's why Milwaukee brought him in. Because right. Because he was supposed to be that main upgrade over Eric Bledsoe. Yes. Because he provides that. And they had been missing that the past several years. A, a, a strong perimeter defender who can, you know, every once in a while give you that offensive production that he's been given. So, uh, Ever since they decided to put Drew on CP3, he's he's been giving him problems. Yes. He's been giving him issues, and Booker as well. He the the play near the end of yeah, game, game four, winning still. yeah, the game winning still that we're probably gonna get into. He was right there for it. He, right, he, he's making plays. He's finding himself in the right spots at the right time. Speaking of the game winning play, we were about to segue right into the game winning play. Sure. As Devin Booker's coming up the court, he tries to do a little spin move, and he just get it. You know, Drew Holiday just plays it perfect, takes mm -hmm. it. That was a perfect alley-oop to Giannis Adamantunko, and that's ball game. Uh, why do you say his name? Giannis. I, I struggle with his name every time. Giannis is – You say it, you say it a different way you say it. <laughs> like every time – you just got a different – might as well have a list somewhere. Man. Got 30 <laughs> different pronunciations of his name. Yeah, is Adamantunko tomorrow. I, Adamantinko yeah. is – Potapinko, maybe, <laughs> maybe Wednesday. You never know. That's fine. But uh, – <laughs> Yeah, by the bing, by the bum. Yeah, we, you just get. Yeah, we got more suggestions coming in. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, man, it was a, it was an amazing yeah. play. It, I mean, Drew Holiday, he got the steal. Right. I mean, the steal was enough as it was, but he bringing that. it down, you seen Giannis eyes wide open because he knew what he was gonna do with it. Yes. And he just said that alley oop in motion, and man, that that was an amazing exclamation point. Yeah, very, Incredible. Very amazing explanation point there from Milwaukee. Uh, but you know, if you know, now we have we're Giannis is one game away from becoming an NBA champion before James Harden. Before Chris Paul, I I know. It. <laughs> well, I mean, I you know, it's 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 there's other players who have rings too. Exactly, but those are the two. We're talking like guys <laughs> that are superstars, MVP, yeah. franchise changing players. Sure. And for Giannis, who's only 26 years old, to be to be one game away from NBA Finals, mm. this could be big for his career, or this could be very bad for CP3 career because I don't I don't see him getting back. Oh, uh, well, I mean, we talked about it. You know, Chris Paul, 16 years. 16 years. 36 years old. You know, Tom is not on his side right no, now. It's you know, he's not his best friend. So the thing about uh, the thing about the whole situation was going in, we knew that he had to have the mentality of there's no tomorrow. Right, right. There's absolutely no tomorrow. But going, I mean, Giannis is an amazing generational talent. Yes. He has proven that. Even before the, you know, the, not saying it's not since Stone, he doesn't have the ring yet. Right. But without the ring, he hasn't had an amazing start to his career uh, and has racked up the amazing accolades at such a young age. Yes, he So it, it, the trajectory for him is already at a generational point. Uh, Chris Paul, like I said, he's going to come in. He, he, he knows there's no yes. tomorrow. Going in, that's why I do still have that belief that they're going to, He's going to have them ready to play. Oh yeah, he's definitely going to have them ready to play because, you know, let loose, nothing to lose right now. You know, just play your game. CP3 is going to have those guys going out there. This is there's no tomorrow for those guys. Absolutely, this not. is a you know win or go home, and this is a championship opportunity mm -hmm. for those young guys. And you know, as as Milwaukee, they're more of a veteran team. Like, you know, when the series got tied two two, there was a lot of people thinking Phoenix was going to run away and win this in six. Mm -hmm. But Milwaukee, they've been through some tough series, and they've been able to bounce back and continue yeah. to bounce back every series to get themselves, you know, in position to win. Mm -hmm. You know, moving forward is you know Milwaukee kind of separating themselves just out in the East. Is that team going to be favored for the next five years? Well, of course, there's the team out in Brooklyn with their three big stars and. They go, you know, those the, guys got to stay healthy. I, yeah, I mean, obviously, but you mean on, on paper. Right, Just right. talking on paper, you got to believe that Brooklyn's still going to be considered the top dog. But, like you said, uh, Milwaukee has more of that chemistry. Yes. Particularly with their two best players, with Middleton and uh, Giannis being there together so long. And then Drew coming in as another glue guy with that veteran experience. Right. So, yeah, of course, absolutely. They're, they're always going to be – they're always going to be those guys who have that – one thing up, you know, that familiarity going having deep playoff runs. So they'll they'll be in it, but there's still going to be competition. I'm not. I don't. I don't want to say that they have the East set in stone for the next four or five years. Right. But they're always going to be in the mix. We could say that much. Yeah, the Milwaukee definitely going to be. I think this is going to be more of a San Antonio Spurs type run with the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis being that Tim Duncan, he's just going to be at a different type. Oh of lord. Guy. Yeah, I, I heard that because people were comparing him to Tim Duncan and. Other big, well, I mean, the Spurs had about twenty years worth of yeah, just absolute dominance. Dom I'm, I'm, dominating the league. As a Rockets fan, I'm glad to see come to an end. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it it just depends on health, right? As long as they stay healthy, and you know, anybody else come because contenders pop up every year in the NBA. Anybody just, can make a trade. Anybody, you all it yeah, takes is one it. deal, right? Maybe one amazing draft. And, you know, you got somebody else popping up that might be that team of the dynasty. Look at the Miami Heat. In my opinion, they're Damian Lillard away from being right there in the contention with the, Miami, with the Eastern Conference. Is it, is, was that supposed to be another segue? <laughs> you just sneaking that in? <laughs> I just uh, had to sneak that in. Yeah, one okay. In. Well, that's cool. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, you know, you mentioned a little bit about the Houston Rockets. The Houston Rockets, they do have the number two overall pick coming up in the NBA draft this year. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are already pissing the Houston Rockets in to take Jalen Green, the guard, out of the G League. Oh, really? Yes, they're pissed. Off. Even though, you know, Suggs and Mobley, in my opinion – you can make a strong case for either one of those guys. Suggs, I well, uh, I like Jalen Suggs. Yeah, obviously, if anybody watched the uh, tournament this year, he was definitely a big factor for Gonzaga Huge player, including that big shot they had in the semifinal. Uh, I also so maybe Mobley. I think Mobley could be 
Evan Mobley is a seven footer that can that can move. Yeah. He can switch on every, any defense defensive player. He could bring the ball up. You can mm-hmm. finish. He's like a seven foot Draymond Green. If that a, a seven foot Draymond. A set, there's a, imagine Dray, I mean, Draymond Green being seven feet. Yeah, but you know he, he's so limited offensively sometimes. He's, I think. Do you think? I mean, is Mobley more? Is, is Mobley more of a? Do you think he could get it twenty a night? No, he, I want to say he could be like a 13, 18 type guy. 13, 18? Yeah. I give him like that much of a five point swing. I don't see him being the leading, league leading scorer. No. Well, I, I mean, you got to, I mean, for a number two pick, uh, he's going to have to be one heck of a defender. I get yes. But if Jalen Green is the guy, if you think he can be the next star to set along, alongside Kevin Porter Jr. and Christian Wood, then by all means, take the, take the pick. Take Kevin, the pick. Or if if oh, I'm also hearing we could trade for that number one pick, take K Cunningham. For, it was a, we're, yeah, we're, I heard that too. We're, we're that, talking about giving up Eric Gordon in the number two pick. Detroit, they they love Draylen Green no, as well. They they willing D, to slide. D, Detroit couldn't possibly be that foolish. <laughs> <laughs> they took Darko Milicic over Carmelo Anthony. But yeah, but that was 15 years ago. You got a guy that's the smartest. <laughs> man, man. Stupidity can't last that long. <laughs> But, you, you, know. you never know, especially in that franchise, that they've been struggling for a while. Yeah, but, I mean, just, I'm, and I like Eric Gordon, but. And they got to sell tickets. They got that brand new arena. Yeah, the, the, Eric Gordon going to sell you some tickets. <laughs> uh, listen, I understand there's been some economic downturn in Detroit for the past several years, but, listen, I don't think they're that star. I understand Detroit Lions football hasn't necessarily yes. been, and I don't know how the Tigers are doing or the Red Wings, but, no, I, I, I don't think that, you know, they – Hey, I gotta go see Eric Gordon. Let me get the kids up together. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, hey, if if that's not the case, you know, I'll stand corrected. But I'm not gonna bank on that. Right, right. And you know, we're gonna segue a little bit more into the NFL. One of the things, uh, you know, I was doing some research this weekend, and mm-hmm. one of the things I want to talk about is the running back position in the NFL. Mm-hmm. If if you was to look at the running back position in the NFL, they they run the ball, they got a block, they got a catch, they got to do, you know. Half the time they produce over fifty percent of most teams' offense. Right. You know what that position rank in league average worth as far as pay? Let me in, sir. Let me know. Only the only positions that make less than running back are long snappers mm-hmm. and fullbacks. No one uses fullbacks anymore. No. Mm-hmm. So the the in my opinion, the second most productive position in the NFL makes the third least annually. Well, uh I think a lot of that stems from if you watch a lot of teams, they use running back by committee. Yes. A lot of teams have multiple running backs because you, sometimes you can get a lot of production out of uh, a committee of, or, or one or two guys right. rather than just one feature back. You only have a few teams who actually do that anyway. But going back to the point about, you know, the pay, we know running back is one of the more brutal. 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 Yeah, it, it, they have one of the shorter shelf lives. Of, they take the most hits. Yeah, you, you're taking a hit pretty much every play. Yes. So it it it, it should nothing. They, should they do away with the rookie running back scale for the running back position? Mm-hmm. Should they do away with the rookie scale? Not put these guys in the box and you can only make it this much because the running back position you're not going to get some of these. Most of these guys don't even get an opportunity to make a second contract That's or true. nowhere near a third contract. Mm-hmm. So that first contract is big for the running back position. Absolutely. I think they should just do away with the rookie scale and pay those guys because, you know, most rookie running backs, they come out of college, they're ready to get 20, exactly. 20 carries a game. That's a good point. You know what I mean? So yeah. You shouldn't have these rookie running backs waiting three, four years to get paid. By that time, they're banged up. They've been used and no one wants to pay them. Hey, you, you, that's the absolute truth. And like you said, they, a lot of times rookie running backs come in, they make a quick impact yes. and just as fast as they come in. They leave. They leave. They leave. You'll have maybe – you'll be lucky if you get a good three, four, five-year run, if that. If that. So I, I would agree. Yeah, I, I think that, that rookie scale, save it for a different position. I think running backs have to be treated in a different light if, c- simply because of that. If I'm the so. NFL Players Association, next time they go to that CBA negotiation with the owners, and if you got a guy in that room that's a running back, they need to vo- vocalize that the running back mm-hmm. position, that need to be a separate pay scale because I was looking at that pay scale – you know, you got like the left, t- you know, offensive linemen left. They do, they're very important. Those guys Absolutely. are making over two point two million, and the running backs are at one point five six million. Yeah. You know, you got the wide receivers at one point nine, uh, tight ends at one point six, defensive tackles at two point two, and most of the if I've asked name Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, mm-hmm. some Saquon Barkley, those are the headlines. Those are the guys yeah. you see on Fox. Those are the guys you, they're they're promoting, mm-hmm. but yet they're the least you know paid. Yeah, because and 
I think we could also chalk that up to the fact that the NFL, the league, is more geared towards passing. And yes. There's more of a need for passers. And, you know, the run game is seen somewhat archaic. Right. It's only been with the emergence of Derrick Henry that we've yeah. more appreciated the feature back. So, I mean, all those factors have kind of gone into the situation there and now. And I agree. We do have to have more of a difference with those running backs in terms of their pay scale because they just it, they they come in and they fade in so quickly. They they go and they exactly. Do. So I, that's why I've, I've never had a problem with running backs holding out. Yeah, get what you can. Yes, while you can. Right. That, that's always been my model with running backs. So never a running back since I'm not showing up to camp. It's perfectly understandable. It's it's un- very understandable when they yeah. come down to business. It's unprofessional, but I I, I, I can tolerate that unprofessional. <laughs> that's unprofessionalism there's, there's, I get behind. There's a level of tolerance to it. Yeah. And you know, I want to segue, you know, as we were talking about, you know, running backs taking the hits, you know, we were sitting here off camera talking about the concussion protocols mm-hmm. and some of the different rule changes we can have that can help these guys limit the amount of concussions and some of the injuries that are happening in football. No. And you know one of you know one of the guy Barry he was telling us about the CFL what they do they have three downs instead of four downs right and it's become more of a pass oriented league at least less you know injuries less you know concussions less guys running to each other mm. could you see the NFL especially going into a seventeen game season probably shortening it down to three downs probably you know changing the game it, it'll be a different pace right it'll be a completely different game mm. but I think it'll help the game be more points. You know, a lot more passing. I think it can help the game. Well, yeah, I, and we definitely did have a great uh, conversation with our, our boss, Bear. Shout out to Bear. Shout out to Barry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but uh, he, he decided to come and be entertained up front. <laughs> but uh, here's the thing. In theory, it's great. Right. But the problem is we're not going to get that because the main focus for the NFL has been more games. Right. More games, more downs, more stuff. So – I mean, the point about the, the, the three downs, I do like that idea. Yes. I do like that. So, I mean, it'd be something to, to it put created, to the It creates more of a sense of urgency. Yeah, it does. It does. You it, don't have that fourth down hanging but, in your But pocket. here's the problem. You have too many <clears throat> You have too many NFL, American football enthusiasts who are going to be too, you know, they, 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 they oh, don't yeah. like change. They so, do. it's like, oh, I don't want to do third. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, but. It's the most yeah, brutal game yeah. on the planet by a- far. Absolutely. Yeah. Some of the most, you know, that's where the most injuries occur. And 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 the problem with that is people love that. Yes. The general public, the viewing public, they, they love it. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I completely agree. That's true. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And that, that, that kind of, you know, coincides with the concussion protocol that they have. I, I'm, I'm really curious to see, do they have, is it just the team doctors? Cause I, yeah, they have. I mean, or they do have, they have a separate doctor from the NFL representing by the NFL that has, that's not affiliated with any team that's just looking out for the he- best, best health interest of the player? Well, I th- they're just team doctors. So they've got a guy who's being paid by the owner. Right. Mm-hmm. Making a decision about what's supposed to be best for the players, which makes no sense. See, I. Right. I, I Con- absolutely. I don't. Absolutely. I, I, it, it needs to be an uh, independent doctor away from the team, not on the payroll. Right. Because yeah, you, it's like Barry said, is is you're going to have that conflict of interest. They're going to have that bias. It's right. Right. Look, he's he's looking out for the best interest of the people who cut his checks. Yeah, he's looking out for the best. In- not he's not even looking out for the best interest of that player. He's yeah. looking out for the best interest of the owner. He wants us. To, if the owner say, "Hey, I need this guy on the field," mm-hmm. you got to make it just clear him. That, right. that, that and you know, and you know what he, sure he does clear. And then the owner wouldn't even have to say that. He, right. That's already understood. Yes. What's understood does not need to be explained. That's a good point. So he, he he's gonna he's gonna do that anyway. That's he's a, gonna make sure he's on the field as soon as possible. That's that's a really good point. I mean, we have to learn yep. to put people ahead of profits. People ahead of profits. That's that's people the lesson. Ahead, that that. I mean, for sports, you know, in order for these players, right. Right. Uh, you know, not to have that kind of impact on his life and his family's life. Right, right. right. And, and he was referring to the Richard Sherman story. Absolutely. If you guys have read uh, Richard Sherman, he came out with a note of apology to the public. And, yeah. You know, we're just sending our thoughts and prayers to Richard Sherman so he could, him and his family, you know, get that situation cleared up. Is it, yes, sir. Right. It's, well, he's got permanent brain damage. That's true. That's true. Well, it wouldn't shock me if it's permanent. Yeah, it, it wouldn't shock me at all. It's, 
And like we said, the situation, and anybody who follows football, follows right. the NFL like we do, yes. know that that whole situation seems so out of character for him. Yeah, if you know anything about yeah. Richard Sherman, the guy, you know, he's a Stanford graduate, mm-hmm. one of the top corners in the league. Defensive coordinators love him, how he absorbs the game. He's a very intellectual guy. Absolutely. So it makes, you know, when you see something like that with Richard Sherman, it kind of, like, that it's has to be. Red flag, yeah. It, it has to Absolutely. be something related to the NFL and him taking those hits because that guy is one of the more intelligent guys in the NFL, period. Mm-hmm. So it, it it just that's why it resonates with people so much. Yes, because it's just it's so out of bounds and random. I know when I first seen, yeah, when I know, see Richard Sherman, yeah, it's just, that, that is, it, it seemed like a, it seemed like it was fake because I know it was Schefter, and you know you got to check the blue check. Yeah, you, you know, gotta check. people <laughs> so always posting those fake news on those profiles. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's it's it's, it's still still shocking, still, still shocking, very shocking. And and again, you guys, this is the event. This is about you guys, not just about about us. Uh, tag us on all of our social media pa- platforms. Facebook, Instagram, wherever you can join us. Uh, send us how you, how you feel about player safety, rule changes, NBA, NFL. We'll love to hear you guys' opinion. And another thing I want I want to get to is, you know, if I was uh, looking at some on Twitter, two players from Texas A and M will receive ten thousand dollars per interview mm-hmm. from a um, private Texas Ag, um, Aggie uh, network. Mm-hmm. I just want to know your opinion. How much is this, uh, you know, being able to pay players? I think it's going to impact recruiting and that these big power schools such as Alabama and Ohio State, mm-hmm. it's going to be even more out of a disadvantage for the smaller schools. Yeah. I-, I say we're going to see the same six, seven schools in the, in the playoffs every year. Well. Because if, if you got teams like Alabama, Texas, yeah. uh, Michigan's probably going to make a resurgence because they got some boosters out there. <laughs> uh, USC is definitely going to make a resurgence. Right. If you got all these prominent schools with these guys with big, deep pockets able to pull out some of the best kids in high schools, college football might suffer from the competitive advantage. I think it's not going to be that competitive anymore. Well, I mean, I see that. Right. But it's good same, that they're paying. Yeah, that, that, that's, I, that's my point. I, I think there should be like a cap, more to say. A cap. Because I want to see schools like a Grambling State succeed. I want to see other, other schools. Smaller schools. Smaller schools succeed. Yeah. A, a Jackson State, a TSU, or a Prairie View, or even some uh, junior colleges. You know, mm-hmm. I want to see guys across the country. That's, what to me, what make March Madness so special, mm-hmm. is you get to see these small these small schools no one's ever heard of go up against a Duke. And now you know a little bit more about uh, San Jose State or mm-hmm. San Diego State, one of these more smaller schools. And look at Gonzaga for prime example. They wasn't like this 10, 15 years oh, ago. Oh, no, not at you all. Know, this program has been built by constantly being in the tournament every year. Mm-hmm. Now they have a national following and they, they now they're able to recruit guys like Jalen Suggs mm-hmm. so you know just your opinion on how can we balance this to make the college football more competitive well I agree with you I think that uh they're as, as happy we are about the uh lessening of the rules and on payment it, there is a, a downside to it as with most things no, nothing's right. going to be completely perfect there's right. still going to be loose ends that we're going to have to tie up at some point yes true and Particularly, like you, you pointed out about those larger schools. But let's be real, they were doing that beforehand. Yeah, they, they, now it's just an open. <laughs> let's, it, it, everything's public now. We it, we know everybody. Can yeah, see we, it now. we they can put it in a, in the newspaper that they're doing it. Who right. knows? They're probably doing it five, ten, fifteen, twenty years. Right. So, hey, I mean, I, I I do agree with that. But the main thing is we got those rule changes. And we're still trying to progress, and as we right. progress with the rules, you know, we're gonna. I, I, I'm going to have faith that we're going to find some ways to, you know, make make everything better. Right, right. And then I, I can't say we can't level out the competitive imbalance. Right. Because Alabama is always going to have an advantage over Prairie View. Yes. It's, it's just it's, there's nothing we can do about it. That's true. So I, I see I see your point on it. but And that's why I say hopefully we just got to let things play out, see what goes on from there. But the main thing is we're taking care of these players. Yes. That, that's 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 the most important thing. Most important all. thing is we don't have these guys going home um, hungry. Exactly. No mo- nothing in their pocket. An- another topic we talked about at nauseum with with our boss Barry about, and it, it, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's been ridiculous for the past several decades. It's ridiculous now, and uh, these kids, they put too much work, too much blood, sweat, and tears, for them to just be left just. Going hungry. I right, mean, right, right. you can't buy nothing. To eat. It's 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 it's, 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 sound, it's so silly, and, and you know, just as a moral standpoint, you know, yeah, it's tough, exactly. It's tough to hear. Is it? Of course. You know, of course. Any, any any rational, decent person who's not worried about their bottom line 
it's gonna you know it, it we feel somewhere about it yes yeah definitely yeah and you know to segue to our next point, um, Aaron Rodgers has reportedly made a decision on what he's going to do this offseason. Mm. And, you know, this story has been lingering around the NFL for, you know, months. Is Aaron Rodgers going to show up to camp? Mm. They're saying he's leaning towards showing up. Mm. And from what I'm hearing is the CEO of the Packers will actually like to move forward with Jordan Love. Oh, really? Yes. He will actually like to move forward with Jordan Love instead right. of Aaron Rodgers. It would save him over $35 million in salary cap if right. they was able to move off of Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. If they move off of Aaron Rodgers, you know, start the season against your Saints with Jordan Love. Yeah. Just how much does this change, you know, for guys like Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, who just signed, you know, big contracts? Mm -hmm. You know, are they second guessing? Did they make the right decision? Because if you don't have Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback, you're you're not going very far. I'm sorry. I'm just you're, you're just not. Well, obviously, it's, it's going to be a totally different dynamic. Right. But if I'm the Packers front office, keep in mind, you took a, this guy with a first round pick. Right. Meaning you're expecting him to make an impact. Yes. And to be your franchise quarterback. You didn't yes. take him in the third or fourth round. True. This wasn't no Dak Prescott situation where we put you out there. You were a late round, well, middle round pick. And, you know, hopefully you'll be successful. You are a first round pick. Yeah. So if I'm the Packers brass, you know, you're, you, you're on the line because if you're openly saying, well, this kid's not ready. Well, we can't have him out here. That's a bad. That's a bad. That's pick. a bad indication of your decision making. Right, right. So I, I do see why they would say that. Right. Now, Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones. Hey, you know, you got your money. So yeah. look at it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now whether you're competitive or not, that that remains to be seen. But uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm just gonna be absolutely honest with you. I think the whole will he or won't he stay thing has become kind of tedious and tiresome. Yeah, uh, hopefully we get some answers before preseason because we all know this is going to dominate. Yeah, the, it's, it's going to dominate the whole NFL landscape around training camp and all that stuff. So hopefully, insights from this just kind of. He, he, hopefully, he makes up his mind. That's all I want to see him do. I, I think Aaron Rodgers has already made up his mind. I think he's just uh, dragging this out. Uh, the CEO he actually has to meet with uh, board of trusters mm -hmm. and actual investors coming up this coming. Uh, I think it's Monday, right? And uh, the camp starts the day after. And, and I think Aaron Rodgers is just leaving things open. Right. You know, so he could go in that meeting and say whatever he wants to say, but there's no certainty on Aaron Rodgers and just see how that's going to rub the investors. Of the, because if you, you know, as you know, the Green Bay Packers, they don't have a single no, owner. No, they no. are owned by a company or a group. Yeah. And that is something else we want to talk about. Should more teams, you know, in sports in general, they mm -hmm. do it overseas and in, in, in the soccer leagues. Should yeah. more teams look to have owners by committee instead of just one owner making the final decision? I think that would be Especially good. Especially for cities like Houston, New York. Yeah, Georgia. yeah. But I think the, the reason why the Packers got it, because it's more of a uh, – they have a different situation because right. they're more uh, almost like a college atmosphere yes. in Green Bay because yes. they're the only show in town. Only sh so uh, it's, it might be a different dynamic if you try to do it in more of a metropolitan city like Dallas or Houston or L.A. or something like that. Right. But, uh, I mean, it, it would be good. I, 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 I would be all for it. So I, I, that's – Kind of it like it has to be a Wayne Dolphins. Thing. I know the Miami Dolphins has. You know, no, they have like five, six owners. Yeah, don't they, they have. They have several. Yeah, they 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 own a by committee. That's that's not that's not one person. It's just a whole bunch of rich people got together and they have meetings every week. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I think. <laughs> they get the cocktails ready. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, you got the cocktails, uh, the filet mignon, all that. Yes, sir. So, so another thing I I wanted to. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Champagne, all that <laughs> on the rocks. On a yeah. Hey, should we should we cut this guy? Should we keep him? They th throw some dice. Ah, cut him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Fifty million dollars. Okay, if he, if he, if he makes a different team by the week. How many people in Houston, for example, would um, would chip in a hundred bucks to own uh, some shares in the Rockets? I think yeah. half of the city would love to own the Rockets. Man, I I ship him about five hundred. Make sure Fatita don't own it no more. <laughs> I just. I, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, it's not a bubblegum shrimp company. No, not at all. Not at all. Well, no, that's how he's running. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, yeah. Because cause his money is off of what is the hospitality business, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, so. One gambling. Yeah, that, the casinos. Yeah. Yes, sir. He also has those casinos. He has the casinos. So, I, see, that, he, bears, he's making our point for us. Huh. We need more people pitching in because these owners, especially the broke boys, <laughs> they. they <laughs> He calling the broke boy. Yeah, that's what he, somebody called him. I can't remember who called to him. He's like, he's a broke boy. You can borrow $2 billion. 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's exactly borrowing money for, to buy it. It's like shouldn't you have that money, Mister? Yeah. He doesn't. He no, doesn't. he doesn't. He borrowed two out of the two point two million dollars. Yeah. Wow. Paid Leslie Alexander with the Rockets. Wow. Ridiculous. He, he was, yeah, he he got hit hard. Yeah, he I, got hit really hard. I wonder if that had anything. I know it probably had a lot to do with James Harden just looking around like, I don't think this guy can even afford a championship team. That one shocked me. Because you that know one shocked he me. had an opportunity to keep Trevor Reza that year. Uh, mm -hmm. After that, we made that historic run, and we just fell short to go to save uh, Chris Paul hamstring. Right. You know, everyone knows the story, but. We had opportunity to keep Trevor Reza. I think that was a big loss in the locker room, not necessarily on the court, because Trevor Reza was kind of like that middleman for Chris Paul and James Harden. Mm. Once you know, Tim, it was like an eight million dollars. Tim Fertitta had to come out to keep Trevor Reza. Right. That eight million dollars probably cost him and the Houston Rockets and the Houston fans a couple of championships. Because if you're looking at the NBA right now, mm -hmm. there's no doubt in my mind the Rockets will be in the NBA Finals representing the West. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, we we. Yeah, he, it, pretty much that whole team is gone. That yeah, whole, that, that team is no more. We only have what Daniel House from that team, I think. Is yeah, still Ms. a uh, player. Horny House, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's still hanging around there. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you guys had to call yeah. him Horny House. Horny, Horny House, he's still <laughs> still keeping on, man. <laughs> keep still it, keeping on. Keep but it. it does really speak to why it speaks to why having a community of uh, you know, community ownership mm -hmm. and right. 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 Like the Packers wouldn't like most. Football teams and soccer teams in Europe, right? Wouldn't be bad for cities like Houston, because then the, it, everything would be more of a vote. You wouldn't have just mm -hmm. one guy making a final. You have like, say, the Rockets are in a decision, or should we train, trade James Harden? You got ten people saying yes, and then you have twenty saying no. Exactly. And, and then now, now he doesn't get traded by decision uh, rule of everyone, not just mm -hmm. one guy making a final decision. He could be in his feelings, as we've seen with. Uh, Plenty of times with Tennessee, mm. with uh, Coach Fisher, he got Vince Young. He really didn't want Vince Young in the first place. He wanted Matt Leinart. Mm. And he just pretty much sabotaged his career in a way. Didn't really give Vince Young that proper opportunity. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's different factors that go into right. uh, different ownership. I, I mean, I, the whole ownership thing in sports is always just kind of rubbed me the wrong way anyway because yeah. I'm the title owner, you know. That's different title <laughs> so, for another day. Yeah, that, that's, that's a different <laughs> It, yeah, it's it's always been a weird dynamic to me. I think they're, they're trying to weird. change that name, if I remember correctly. What's overseer? Is that? I think it was uh, something like of that term. I'm, I'm joking. That's it, that, it, that's it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, over, over, Overwatch, something. Man with the money. So you know, I, that 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 dynamic on its own is you know that I've always had an issue. Yeah. It's always stuck in my craw. But yeah, it's 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 tough. But. Go ahead, bro. No, uh, you go. I was I was going to segue to our next topic. Yeah, you're right, uh, right, you're right here. Uh, it, it's I was going to segue to our next topic. Uh, I was mm -hmm. actually doing some uh, digging this weekend, and uh, as you guys know, Carl Nassib at the NFL uh, announced a few weeks ago that he's the first um, gay player to play in the NFL. Recently, uh, one of the top prospects in the NHL came out and said he was gay, and you know he says from a young age I have dreamed of being an NHL player. And I believe that living my authentic life would allow me to bring my whole self to the rink and improve the chances of fulfilling my dreams. Prekrop, a six foot four right-handed defensive from Edmonton, Alberta, was selected a third round by the Predators in 2020 NHL draft. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, it's interesting to see from Carl Nass of him opening up, allow more athletes to feel comfortable opening up. Yep. I think this is really good for all sports involved because mm -hmm. you're allowing, you know, all communities feel like they're a part of sports. Right. There's always been in most masculine sports such as basketball, football, hockey, that you're not accepted to play because of you know, whatever you agenda you might have. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's gay there. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, you, you ain't lying. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a, quite a group. And I just think it's, it's very, it's good to see more athletes come out and open up about, mm -hmm. open up more about this. Mm -hmm. So p more people could feel comfortable, not only playing, but watching, even going to games. I agree. I agree. Uh, I'm not going to pretend like I am an NHL enthusiast. I right. can tell you a defensive been from a goalie. So. <laughs> yes. But, you know, once again, it's another person coming out. Uh, and, like, you know, I think as as a society, uh, people in terms of their sexuality, we've become more acceptable, like accepting right. of it. 
but we still have a long way to go. It's still still a work in progress. So, uh, what? What? No, he, he was Zach. He was. We're good. Me, he was getting me on my posture. I got to work on my posture, guys. I have terrible. And you like seven foot three, man. <laughs> <laughs> like a tree trying to keep itself balanced. So I, I understand. <laughs> but no, I'm glad you're working on it, bro. But yes. you you good. But uh, going back to my point, uh, we've become a lot more acceptable, but progress still needs to be made. You know, right, we right. still have a long way to go. So these athletes coming out and and you know telling their stories, telling their experiences, uh, making themselves a part of the community, ingratiating themselves with the LGBT community, it, it, it's it's a wonderful thing. And right. uh, I, once again, just like I did with uh, NASA for the Raiders, I, I wish them the best. Yes, you know, uh, fortunately, the you're gonna get the the media stir with uh, or the media attention, but uh, hopefully he keeps it all in stride and maybe more players will, you know, make it a norm. Yeah. More players make it a norm and more fans yeah. will feel like they're a part of the game. And that's the Absolutely. bigger thing. I, Absolutely. Bigger issue. I want, I want everyone to feel like no matter what background you have, no matter how you, you know, go about yourself that you're welcome to watch a football, basketball, be, or even play or be a part of the game because mm. everyone has something to offer. Absolutely. Absolutely. No matter gender, sexual orientation, anything. Yes, sir. Transgender players. Transgender? Transgender? I don't. A woman who's become a man or a man that's become a woman? I don't think we, in terms of the major sports, I, I don't I know. Have, I don't know if, we, if no. we have crossed that path as of yet as far as any yeah. transgender players playing in any major sports. But that would be a very interesting to see. Yeah. I'm pretty sure coming down within the next five to ten years, we're going to see a transgender athlete. Well, no. You know, actually, now that we're talking about it, I do remember hearing a story about a transgender MMA fighter. Oh, wow. Yeah, a transgender woman. Name was F- Fallon. Female became a female. Yeah, she, well, he, well they, were, uh, they were born a male, became a female, and they were MMA fighter. Now, obviously, that cause some controversy because yeah, because yeah, the combat sports aspect but other than that I, I don't think i think that's the only one i've heard of so far uh but like but like you said it's, it's gonna be who Kate, Kate, uh, Jenner. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah, yeah well yeah because well i mean caitlin i guess you can't count it but yeah <laughs> Kalen was already long past the olympic time the olympic athletic prime I, in terms of like now no, uh, not not that I could think of in the major sports. Not. Yeah. So hopefully that changes. You know, like it, people now with their sexuality, we're, we're accepting of that and still have progress. I wonder if you would create like a, a, your own league for that. You know, I, I don't want to try to separ- separate separate the transgender, but it's like there, there's so much rules. You know, uh-huh. you say, you know, you have a guy, right, and he goes transgender and then he tries to go into the WNBA, right? I, I just don't think that's fair. Me personally, I just don't. You have a guy that's seven feet tall I'm, that can I'm, jump out the gym. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to let you talk because I don't. Because I might say something that I might not have any been the same. <laughs> but it, it's it's just we're, we're being we're being sensitive to the plight, Gentry. Yes, I, I'm being sensitive to the yeah. plight as well. And Alex Ventura, that's my son. He's saying, "Hey, hey, Alex, hey, Zeke, Serena, everyone watching. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for joining." Was that your son? Yes, that, that was Alex, my son. He's a brilliant brilliant kid man mm-hmm. thank thank you alex love you too and uh you know i, I w- wanted to get you know I, i'm not trying to be insensitive to them i'm just saying as a competitive just i'm talking in a sport yeah i know i'm just i'm just joking. If, if you have a guy mm. and you know he you know he wants to you know be classified as a woman i get it i understand yeah you should be able to play in the wnba mm-hmm. i just feel like he's gonna have a physical advantage like just why can't he just play in the nba but he could still be a transgender I don't. I don't know. You have to ask them. Right. Right. Technically, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. And I, I just, you know, it's, it's, it's not. You know, I'm not saying that like, he shouldn't play as far as like his, you know, status or whatever. Yeah, I'm you, just, you're, I'm you're just about questioning the, about the biological differences between, you know, a person who was born one way and then transition to the other not 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 just him being born a different way but like if if he's good enough to play in the wnba or nba this is gonna be like a top athlete well i i don't i don't know man you're gonna have to ask him i I, I don't i know i know it's a sensitive i'm not getting i I, I know it's tough yeah but it's it's something that you know i i I always think about like if he like say lebron james was to be like 
I don't do that. In the hypothetical, don't the do hypothetical, that. Because now, it's, if, if LeBron James was to be oh. like, oh, I want to go switch it over and go to WNBA. Oh, oh, transgender oh, athlete. Olympics. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, well I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. So Laurel Hubbard from New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Uh, is going to be competing as a female, even though they were born. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's I'm, good. And and that, like I said, it's, they it's, should be. It's it's a it's a it's a nuanced topic. It's it's, it's something. It, it gets a little complicated when we. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a touchy well, subject, but it. Yeah, they're, they're showing on the screen. Okay. Good lord. Yeah, man. Hey, how you just deadlift seven thousand like that? <laughs> I don't know. You. Something that all women can do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, some big old women. <laughs> You what? What I say? You, say, <laughs> you can't be talking about doing from San Antonio like. I didn't talk about them. I, no, you know what? What's funny? My mother, uh, she watches the show every day, and that's like the first thing she said. You, you like Charles Barkley? You like that Charles Barkley? I was like, I don't, please don't, <laughs> don't associate me that, so, Mama, please. Oh man, because Charles Barkley is just a. He's good at what he do, man. He's yeah. a modicum of nonsense. <laughs> Like but it's that. entertaining though, so yeah, everybody tolerates. But you know, Charles Barkley has some ridiculous takes. Oh, he has. Some. And everybody, whenever he does, it's guarantee. Oh, uh, he, they made it. I mean, everything they do, he make they make it to a gimmick with them. So, <laughs> but no, I, I, but I didn't. I understood what what you meant by it, Mama. I, you know, you meant I was the entertaining aspect of the show. So I appreciate that. I don't like to think I, I'm just talking. I just Andy. I just say things. You one of the funniest guys I've met. I always kept me laughing. And that, the bars must really be low for you then. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> man. So you know, the segue to our next topic. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the NFL. This is when I kind of just throw a couple of things at you, bounce them off of you. Um, the NFL is training camp starting to open up, mm-hmm. and I just want to get your early thoughts. I know it's super early. Injuries can happen. A lot of things could go wrong for a lot of teams. Mm-hmm. You know. Who are your some of your Super Bowl favorites early on? It, it don't ha- it don't have to be status quo. Who are some of your teams that you're looking at that can really make a strong Super Bowl run? I mean, if uh, I guess everybody's kind of jumping on the Buffalo train. Everybody likes what right. Buffalo's got to offer. You know, Josh Allen's there with Diggs, and like I said uh, last week, they added a pretty good number two receiver in uh, Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders, okay. But going back to the point. Uh, probably, man. I, I've, I've said this already, but people are really sleeping on that uh, Matthew Stafford to the Rams trade, oh, man. Because you talk about a complete team, and they didn't give up much to get him. They, they just kinda gave just, up their weakness. Yeah, it's pretty much yeah. Jared Goff. They just kind of swapped. Right. So looking at them last season, they were a strong team. They had pretty much everything you can ask for in every aspect, except that elite quarterback play. Right. And Matthew Stafford. The story of his career, for the most part, even when he had Calvin Johnson, was he's an elite quarterback, but he's never had much of a running game. Right. His offensive line has been shaky at best. The defense has been inconsistent or just non-existent, either one. So, the Bears? The Raiders. The Raiders. Oh, the Raiders. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, you know what? The thing about that, the Raiders that, is they still have question marks at, at quarterback with Derek Carr. That division. They and, got, and the division, yeah. The you gotta, division, you got the, the Chiefs. You got the Chiefs. Got so they're always going to be in it. That's Chargers. And then if, if Broncos pull a trigger on Aaron Rodgers. And that's, yeah, and that's another that's another team who can really, really be a contender who might be a quarterback away. Right. I love Teddy Bridgewater. I, he's always been my guy. Right, right. Uh The question remains, will he be able to give that type of quarterback play that gets them over the top? That remains to be seen. But he, his name serves him. He's a bridge to get you to the next quarterback. He, he's his name serves him perfect. Ah, God, I, I, I don't want to disparage my boy, man. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't disparage my guy. I, I just, you know, he's no, a no. good quarterback, but I don't think, you know, Carolina. Well, he's not. Well, he's not. Well, here's the thing. He's not 99 Kurt Warner. Okay. No, no, no. He not, never was that. Nah, but nah. he's a serviceable starter who can give you, you know, if you had a an quality elite, performance, if you had an elite defense, could Ted, Teddy Bridgewater be the quarterback to get you? Absolutely, to yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, if you have so. an elite defense, you can get you can get to the Super Bowl with. I don't think Teddy Bridgewater adequate quarterback play. And I don't think he's adequate. You don't think he's adequate? No. What? And what see, I'm not even going to start a, a discussion <laughs> with you because you you just. You just disparaging my boy, and I, I just I, I don't want nothing to do with that anymore. <laughs> Man, you just. So, but yeah, I, I'd say. Going back to the original question, uh, Buffalo would probably be up there for most people. 
Uh, Chiefs are always going to be in it. The Chiefs are always always going to be in it for the next several years. Uh, but we kind of just throw the Chiefs in there, you know, like. Well, why wouldn't you? You never know in that division. We were just talking about that division. I mean, but okay, from top to bottom. But the Chiefs are at the top, and right. everybody's just kind of middling for that second spot because the Chargers are good, but there's still a lot to be left. You know, just remain to be seen with. Darwin uh, James, can he stay healthy? Yeah, and and Herbert. You know, uh, is he going to have that sophomore slump? Is he right, going right. to continue? A lot of people say on? Andy Lane was holding him back. Coach Lane was holding uh, Justin Herbert back. But I don't see that because I seen him in Oregon. I didn't see this. I didn't. See, I mean, yeah, I didn't see I that. I think Lane kind of let him off the leash a little bit, in my opinion. Exactly. I, I mean, his, they played us uh, in the Dome last year, man. Oh, they, yeah, he they, lit y'all up. Yeah, well, you didn't have to say that. <laughs> no, he lit y'all up. I had to, no, he lit y'all yeah, up. He, yeah, he did. He lit us up. We got, we got, we got. <laughs> Filet for a while, but we end up pulling out the win. Yeah, but yeah, won. he had an amazing performance. His arm is ridiculous, and he you're has, right. He has a laser. Yeah, uh, that Oregon being on the West Coast, so the yeah. games are late. A lot of us didn't watch. I never watched. And it. Oregon always, we've it. always had that stigma of, well, they play more of that spread, spread read offensive option. read option, so it doesn't really translate as much to the pro level, you know, f- for somebody to be successful. Right. So I mean, we we kind of. Had our blinders on for uh, Justin Herbert, but he he's he's really he can really do some things on that football field with his arm. So I wouldn't be shocked if the Chargers give Kansas City a run for the money in that AFC West. I'm not banking on it, right? Right. Because the Chiefs are the Chiefs, but you know, or you the Raiders. Know. The Raiders play the Chiefs very tough every year. Josh. They do. They just don't play everybody else tough. That's the problem. <laughs> Did, did we think the move from Oakland to Vegas was – oh, absolutely. Oh, that was a good move. Well, o- Oakland – the thing about Oakland was – Even the they, Warriors left Oakland, didn't they? Yeah, they, but yeah. Oakland's infrastructure has always been bad. Right, right. The, here's a funny thing that a lot of people don't realize. The Raiders, when they were in the AFL, they were originally in Oakland. You no, know, the Bills? You know, that's my wife. Your lovely wife? Yeah, she's saying the Bills, that's – Wow, she's a. Hey, just I, I hope you don't. I, I hope you I don't have. You, but she's more of a Mahomes chief. I hope you don't have uh, the the, the Bridgewater slander like your husband does. <laughs> that was totally necessary. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm not a big Bills. You're not a big. No, I'm, I'm. I'm just going off what everybody's saying. I don't. I don't no, know. Person. I'm worried about. Yeah. Darian, if you, I'm not. I don't. You know. Whatever. I, I well, no, I don't. Like, ha- I mean, I, you know, I'm going to be. I'm gonna be. As much as I said, Beverly said the Steelers. The Steelers? Uh, of course, oh, you're going to say the Steelers. I'm going to say the Steelers. Is there any shock? No. <laughs> That's just a tough division. Tough division. Mm. He was in the NFL consistently. Right. Decades. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. And, and, and. Yeah, yeah you yes. can't you can't count the Steelers out. You yes, never that defense could. is nasty. That, exactly. that, that secondary, I think they might have the best secondary in the. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, tomorrow. Mika Fitzpatrick been a. I mean, that was a Man, perfect trip. That was a steal. Now Ben is 155 years old <laughs> and about 655 pounds. And Rosberg and he was, How about that John Herschel kid is doing a PhD in math? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna find out uh, uh, John Herschel because I I, yeah, I, I could have sworn it. I seen him in a. Um, some type of commercial. Uh, this guy, this guy is P, having a PhD in math at MIT, yet playing in the NFL. That yeah. is a, that's incredible. It, yeah, and he just published his own book. book. That is I, be a top athlete in a smart like that. MIT is not an easy school by any no. means. No, but it, do you remember? Because uh, he was the number one high school player when I was a freshman in high school. Remember Myron Rowe? Yeah, they, 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 went to Florida State. Safety, the one yeah. Myron Rowe, he was a safety. He played at uh, Florida yeah. State University. Actually, was a Rhodes Scholar. Yes. Uh, now he's actually a neurosurgeon. Wow. Yeah. So uh, didn't, didn't he pass it up on the NFL? No, he played for a while. He played for uh, he got picked by Tennessee and was there for like two, three years. Then he went uh, to uh, Oxford. Right. Right. Full time, and then he became a neurosurgeon. That's I th- one of the things there's a misconception about how smart. Oh yeah. Oh, NFL players, you got to be. NFL or mm-hmm. smart ass. Like John Herschel's dad's a cardiologist. Right. 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 Right, right. And especially if the quarterback position, you got to be a genius. You got to know everybody. Posi- you got to know everybody responsibilities. You got to know yeah, what so much. the defense. And then based on what the defense is in, you got to be able to adjust. And then you got to be able to read coverages within like two to three seconds, make quick, rational decisions. Quarterback decision. Quarterback in the NFL is in my the reason why it's the best job in sports because it's one. Of, it's the hardest job in sports. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not trying to get rid of a rookie skill. <laughs> nah. they, they're gonna make their money. Yeah, they gonna they, make all their you got to do is be somewhat passable. You gonna make your money. Yeah, you, as a quarterback, you're good. Long as long as you can throw it exactly. ten yards. Ask uh, Taysom Hill and Tim Tebow. 
Sorry, I, had, I didn't mean to slam the. I don't care about no taste and shit. That that's guy, fine. I don't see how he, that's. that's I, that. I, did, you, you really didn't. That didn't hurt at all. That, that contract's crazy. No, what? What the, you talking about for Taysom? Yeah, Taysom Hill. Yeah. You know, I seen y'all talk about it on a different show. I want to call in and say something. You know, the, the years are avoidable. It's not. A, it's not what everybody thinks it is. Those oh, so are avoidable years. Oh, okay. So it really just comes out to a one year, somewhat towards me. He doesn't make that much. Now he can make. They can. They can up his salary, but it's. Right. It's. It's not. It is not what the the media just. Trust me on it. It's not what the media says. Because on it. ESPN.com, that, it's like a hundred. No, no, we not. No, <laughs> no. trust me. If you've seen them games, he, no. Uh, I, we would have gave him one outright, but no. It, he can be gone by, by the end of this year. So And it could happen with Jameis Winston. I think there's going to be a big year for Jameis Winston. And one of the teams I was, you know, they made a big move in the offseason, uh, the Tennessee Titans. Mm-hmm. I just feel like in Tennessee, if, if you're Vegas, if you're in Tibetan or anything like that, Right now, if you if you check out the odds with the Tennessee Titans, check them out. That's a, that's 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 where it's at. For one, I don't you know even though Carson Wentz isn't isn't now in the division, mm-hmm. I see Tennessee easily handling the the Colts, the Texans. Right. They they can they can walk in here. once again. What is understood does not a, need to be exactly. You <laughs> don't even have to worry about the Texans and the Jaguars. They're in the rebuilding mode. Right. So Tennessee, they have e- an easy five five to six wins already. Right. They're going to win a division. Okay, I think they're going to be. One of the top two seeds. They finally got a guy to go on the opposite side of AJ Brown, and not sure. just any guy. They got Julio Jones. Sure, you can't load up against Derrick Henry. Tannehill, he's shown he's. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but that's that's the point I was getting to. There still are some questions. One Tannehill. What, what, what I'm gonna get to him. Mm-hmm. One is about Julio. Now, obviously, being being a Saints fan, I've seen Julio. Right. Julio for the last two three years dealt with a lot of injury issues. Right. A lot of sitting out. So there's that question of, and plus he's already, I think he, he's 30 already. He's like 30, yeah, 31. He's, he's the same age as me, 32. Yeah, yeah. So that question of his age and then attrition, you know, what what Julio Jones are we going to get? Right, right. We're not going to get prime he, Atlanta Falcons Julio Jones. Even if you're Jones. getting 80% of Julio, that's better than 90% of receivers. But I don't even know if we're getting, I don't even know if 80% is going to be there for 16 games. That's the question. Uh-huh. And number two, like you, you know, alluded to, Ten Hill, right? I understand people give me, you know, because I've been on Twitter. I've been one of his biggest deniers. Oh yes, <laughs> but the the reason why I said that because he had he's put up amazing regular season numbers. He's had mediocre playoff performances these last two seasons with Tennessee. I want to see if he can. Hey, okay, right, you had thirty three touchdowns, seven interceptions, great year, but then you were kind of you know. Ho hum against Baltimore in the playoffs. In the playoffs, and then the year before when they went to the AFC title game, if you remember, he didn't do nothing. Nah, he, he didn't have much. You know, anybody go look at those passing numbers? It was all it was Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry that, put that team on his back and carried them all the way to the NFC title game. And that, and that, that offense is going to be heavily relying on Derrick Henry. Yeah, again, and it's going to be a seventeen game seven. Exactly, that's going to be tough. And, and any he, running, he's back. going to take a beat. Even even the big Frankenstein running back, <laughs> Derrick Henry is. It's still going to be. Uh, a question of can he hold up for those 17 games right so you know those are my questions with Tennessee obviously on paper they are going to be the class of the AFC South right right but the, you know the thing with Tannehill we're gonna see I, he's got he's got to convince me he's gonna have to do something in the postseason right if 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 he does then yeah I think Tennessee is up there with the Kansas Cities in terms of a Super Bowl contender Kansas about, City and Buffalo what about the NFC NFC? NFC. But, yeah, I, well, we just talked about the Rams. I the think. Rams. The Rams. Uh, Seattle, I mean, they're always going to be in as long as Russell Wilson is there. As long as Russell Wilson is there. I, I think there's too much beef between C- Russell Wilson and that front office. I know they went out oh, yeah. and got his face, face his offensive line. I know they got him some you know, some new toys and some wide receivers. Right. I really believe Russell Wilson looked at Tom Brady winning that Super Bowl and thought to himself, like, look at all that time he has to throw the football. Hmm. If he can if, – if Tom Brady and – you know, these quarterbacks, they got egos. Yeah. He's probably looking at, I'm way better than Tom Brady. Hmm. Give me an offensive line. Give me weapons like that and see what I can do. Hmm. So, you know, I'll be interested because he's been, you know, going back and forth with the front office. I don't know if, if yeah. Seattle, the, the camaraderie is there. Cause, but a team in the NFC I keep, I keep a close out for is the Cowboys. I'm not a Cowboys fan. By any means, I probably want the biggest. That's, that's funny you had to preface that, but. Oh, and also we oh, also we, we, like the yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Max Sports starting next month. We will be launching in Dallas, Texas. We just we just you know sold our license out there to Dallas. So 
We're going to have a new station coming in Dallas. We're not just going to be in Houston. We're going to be all over Texas. And we're also going to be covering all the tough Tufa football games all over across the state of Texas. So be on the lookout. Stay with, stay tuned here on Max Sports. Yeah, expansion, man. It's a beautiful thing. Hey, we're expanding all over. Expanding. And we still got KDC basketball. I'm not KDC basketball. We love Dallas. Yeah, we love we love Dallas. My, my sister stays in Dallas. I love it because of that. Chad Gross. Chad Gross. Gross. New owner. Shout out to you, Chad. Yes, sir. Welcome to the Max Sports uh, team. Yes, sir. And, and the reason I, I say the Cowboys is because I feel like a lot of, believe it or not, people are overlooking them seriously as a contender. People, you know, are using a lot of predetermined stigma with the Cowboys. But if you look at how they drafted, they're mm -hmm. getting back Prescott back. That defense, I think that, uh, the I don't know if he's a linebacker or a safety. The kid's just all over the field. The kid, the uh, uh, the Pick from Penn State. The pick for Penn State. Uh, yeah, big linebacker. Uh, he's like a. He's kind of like Isaiah Simmons. He plays linebacker. Yeah, he, he's a, he's a very athletic. They, uh, they move him different. He could he, pass he had, rush. Now he didn't play last year because he had uh, uh opted out for, due to COVID. But uh, a lot of players saved their draft stock by doing that. That was very intelligent. By the yeah, kids. sure. But uh, I mean, with Dallas, it's it's a question about the defense, obviously, because it was historically bad. Right. Right. Uh, who in that division is really? Jalen Hurts. Well, the NFC East is just going to just be a laughing stock. Every, Daniel Jones. This is going to be comedy. Or who's the Redskins quarterback? Uh, they 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 got like three or four guys. That they're no they're shuffling. Exactly. Not a thing about but it. you got Dak Prescott, Zeke, Ceedee Lamb. I'm I'm going to go with that crew to at least win that division and getting in the playoffs. And if they get in the playoffs, I think you know they're alive. They they are alive. Once again, I mean, just I'm I'm still worried about that defense. That defense is still a huge question mark. Now, granted, they made some. Right. Significant changes. Got a draft pick that they feel like he'll be an immediate impact player. But Donovan Wilson is going to be a big – he's going to make a big jump this year. Okay. I mean, the hey. Out of A&M, that kid comes up and plays no, no of games. A&M. No. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> I'm going to put the – A&M, they, they, they're they probably my sleeper pick to make it to a BCS game this year, like top four. How did we jump to that? We I was just throwing it out there. I, don't be surprised if A&M knocks off a couple people, including your LSU Tigers. Just saying. <laughs> I got to start a pot sometime. So, you know, we're going to segue. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Yes, sir. And, you know, we're going to segue, you know, wrapping up with the NBA Finals. You know, we have game six mm -hmm. tomorrow. Right. And I want to know, you know, who's your pick? Do you see Phoenix, you know, tying it up, sending them back to Phoenix, to you know, for game seven? Or do you see Milwaukee cutting down the nets, becoming the NBA champions? First championship since the 70s of Kareem and Oscar. 1971. That's right. correct. Uh... Like I said, I'm I am yeah. a, a big Chris Paul fan. I yes. want to see him win that ring. That was a tough loss they took that, uh, that hurt. on Saturday. It definitely was. But like we said at the beginning of the broadcast, worst contract in the history of Tim McRae. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> the it, worst it, contract said by Tim McRae. Said, said by the worst owner in sports. Oh, but uh, Ridiculous. yes, sir. Oh, worst. But I'm I'm going I'm going I'm going to go ahead and say that Phoenix ties it up. It'll be a close one as they've all been. Right, but. I think this time with the last two games, the, pre the previous two games where, you know, it was a turnover by a Phoenix player, uh, game four, it was CP3, game five, it was Booker. I think one of them makes that big-time shot in the last few moments that gets them that tie, and then we're going to have game seven in uh in Phoenix. I'm going to go ahead and say it. You go, you go on with Phoenix? I'm, I'm going to go I'm, with Phoenix. I'm going to I, I want to see what you said because I remember your prediction. <laughs> I, I said won't. Phoenix is I, – I had did. Phoenix is seven. Yes, you did. But I had them going up 3-1. But obviously they're down three two. Okay. So with that being said, Phoenix tomorrow they're going to walk up into Milwaukee. Chris Paul he's going to have a a, a, a poetic yeah. performance. He's going to have one of those forty fifty point. He might even score fifty points for the first time in his career. I don't. I don't. Never, he, I'd have to look that up. I have to look that. I'm, I'm pretty sure he hasn't up. scored fifty points in his career yet. But he's going to have one of those historic performances, and I think that we're going back to the foul, to the valley, and we're going to see Phoenix wrap this up in seven. I think. Okay. Uh, Chris Middleton, he's had his special games. We, you know, Chris Middleton. You were just saying that he could go from Michael Jordan one game, next game he Kyle could be Kuhn. Kyle Korver. So I think Kyle Chris, Kuzma. Kyle, at least with Korver, he could still hit some shots. But he, he they said Kyle Kuzma? they said Kuzma. Yes, Man, it was Kuzma. That's bad. Yeah, very well, bad. But that tears is the duality of him. So, but my thing is, he might be because he plays a little bit better at home now. So, but I think that they could still it's win. Be a lot of there. pressure on Milwaukee. Of course. I, I, yeah. I mean, it's going to be pressure on Phoenix as well, but oh, yeah. I, I don't think Milwaukee, they're going to walk into this game. Right. They've never been in this situation. 
No. Never been in this situation. It's going to be, you know, to eliminate a team right on the brinks of elimination, that, that is not easy. For a championship, absolutely. For a championship. So, and again, man, that wraps it up. We're already down to our last minute. And thank you so much to all of our viewers tuning in on This Is The Event. You guys have, you know, come in with so many questions and suggestions. I can't thank you guys for enough. And as, as always, if you guys want to tag us after the show on all our social media pages, we'll come in for our next show and talk to you. And uh, this is Darian Valson. I'm Jen Trey Williams. We're got, about to get ready to sign off. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Peace and love, everybody in Houston and all across the world. You guys have a great night. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Like TSA. like TSA, this is a PSA, sports in my blood like DNA, we grindin' for the chip like Frito Lay, and I'm gon' let you know if he don't play, I promise this show will never be a boy, checkin' out talent from C. Keys to North Shore, it'll never be a gimmick, was that all day, now I'm at Nimitz.